Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to another episode of Days of Night. And for the past, I would say six months or so, I've been trying to find a companion camera or some might call it a backup camera to my Nikon F100. And while it might be easy to just say, well, get another F100, I wanted something that would do similar to the F100 and maybe a couple of things that it couldn't do, and I definitely wanted a smaller form factor. When I started my journey, I did the first impressions on the F60 and the F75 or N75 and 60 depends where you're at. And I didn't like either of those cameras enough to be able to call them my second permanent 35 millimeter body. If you want to see those videos, I'll leave a link to them in the description. During these two reviews, I had a ton of you in the comments recommend the Nikon F80. One of you said it was 75% of the features at like a quarter of the cost or something like that. And I was shopping around for one for a while. I'm very careful on my purchases these days because I've made a couple of bad ones. My Pentax 6.7 had to be serviced, my F100 had to be serviced. So while I was able to pay for peace of mind, it was still initially frustrating. However, while I was shopping for the F80, uh, someone emailed me, a viewer, and said that they'd like to donate an F80. Now initially I thought that this was somebody donating their F80, but as it turns out, they purchased an F80 for me and then field tested it for me to make sure that everything was in order. I, I, sometimes I'm just floored by people's generosity. And Nathan, thank you so much. It was an incredible gift at a uh, kind of a crappy time in my, uh, in my life this year. So it came at a very, it came at the perfect time. But between all the recommendations on this camera, as well as the donation, there's a lot riding on this camera. Does it live up to its reputation? Let's find out. So before I get started, I want to give you a couple of quick updates. First is I have a new zine. This zine contains my best photos of 2021. Black and white, digital, color film, 35 millimeter, medium format. It is simply the best based on the image. Oh, look at that. I opened it right up to the, <laughs> to the title and I'm quite proud of this. I spent a lot of time making sure that, that I fit things together in such a way that there was, you know, cohesion. Um, I definitely tell some stories, both um, personal and anecdotal. I also have all the cameras and film and developers listed in the back for the for the people that are curious on that. To those who want to support the channel and maybe learn a little bit more about me and what I'm all about, uh, this is a great way to do it. I want to do these for previous years as well. It does take a lot of work though, so it's going to be a slow process. Link to this zine and my other one, Follow the Tracks, in the description. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the Nikon F80. This particular model I have is in fantastic cosmetic condition. Uh, there doesn't seem to be really too many issues with scuffing or sticky plastic or anything like that. Really impressed. The lettering is still all complete there, um, but that's not what you're here to see. You wanna know you know, some of the basic functions of how this camera works. I'm not going to be going over everything today. This is a first impressions video, but I will definitely cover the basics enough to get you started. On the top end, you've got your typical manual and then aperture and shutter priority and program. Uh, you've also got your custom area where you can change your custom functions and your ISO um, where you can change your ISO. Now, if you remember in my reviews of the F60 and F75, uh, I did not have ISO control, and to me that was a crucial aspect of having a secondary camera. Like many Nikon SLRs, including my DSLR, the D780, it flips on with a switch right by the shutter. Right here you have exposure compensation and flash exposure compensation. Here's where you pop up the flash. The back here is a bit different than what you might see on yours. I have a data back, and you can switch modes here 
on how you want the date to be displayed. I personally don't want to have the date on the bottom of my photos, but I'm pretty sure I could think of a couple of uses for it. Like if I was shooting a roll over multiple sessions, maybe I waste a frame and place the date in between um, shooting dates or something like that. And of course, dials are in their typical fashion. One on the front, one on the back here. You can switch between metering modes with this switch right here. It's a little stiff, um, but I'd rather have it stiff than loose. Lens release is right here. Turns clockwise and then snaps on counterclockwise. That is about it. If you've shot an icon before, this is not going to be anything new for you. Next up, my field test. Okay, everyone, I'm just outside of Olds, Alberta, and I am working on my grain elevator project. I've already come across my first issue, which is that the grain elevator that I wanted to photograph, I just wanted to blow a whole roll on, is more or less fenced off, um, and there's a private property, no trespassing sign, which means that the grain elevator is privately owned, it's uh, it's obviously a huge disappointment, but I think I can work around it by capturing it at different angles and maybe even walking up the tracks a bit. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna load up the uh, camera with film and and just go from there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go all the way over there. I am a little unsettled by having to walk along the tracks. I've got 12 frames already, so can't really complain on that end. I think the best thing that I can do here is just head to the next grain elevator. There are three others in the area that I'm using as backups today. It's a good thing that I had it planned out because this is the second time I've had one cut off by a no trespassing sign. Okay, before I head to Crossfield, I thought I'd give you a couple of pretty obvious but initial thoughts on the Nikon N80, or in this case, F80. It is really small <laughs> form factor compared to the F100, and there is an instant familiarity when I, you know, picked it up really to shoot it for the first time which is today <laughs> obviously lenses like this my nikon 24 to 120 f4 it's a beast on it i'm much more likely to shoot with a 35 or 50 millimeter f1.8 next stop is going to be crossfield alberta those of you might remember from a fortnight of film that the last time i went there like the practically the whole city was under construction and I couldn't really get any shots whatsoever, but I'm going to assume that construction's done and I'll have better access to the grain elevator this time. If not, I still have a couple other backups in mind. There's a train in the distance and it's uh, coming really slowly or it's stopped and I don't want to cross and then be blocked from my car for the next however long. Some of these trains are 100 cars long so I definitely want to stay on this side for now and be aware. Yeah, pretty sure it stopped. Still not going to cross. Why take the risk? I am all finished up in Crossfield. That train never did come by, but I wasn't about to risk it, you know. Murphy's Law, as soon as I cross those tracks, it'll come barreling down and then I'll have to walk two uh, kilometers around it 
just to get back to my car. Um, now I'm on my way to a little town called Bicycle. Uh, right now my camera is at 26 or 27 shots, so I'm going to have to be way more selective on this last one. I'm going to have to really carefully pick my compositions. Um, and I think the way I'm going to go about that is I'm just going to avoid shooting what I've already shot. Like, yeah, maybe I'll get one frame where it's like typical uh, grain elevator shot, wide angle, leading lines, whatever, basically what I've been doing. Um, but for the last bit, um, you know, these last 10, 9 shots, I'm going to have to make sure that I do something that doesn't look like the uh, shots that I took at the other two grain elevators. If there's one thing that I really love, it's peeling paint. I'm on shot number 32, so five more shots. This is really weird. Like, what is this part of? That rather than get the whole pile, I think what I'm gonna try and do is just get like a weird abstract detail I don't know if this is part of the railroad track or part of the inside of the uh, grain elevator itself. I kind of want to say railroad track because over here is an end of track sign, which sort of leads me to believe that they ripped all this up recently. But there's two piles and I want to get some deep shadows and piercing highlights and I think that I can do that with this. Mosquito in my nose, let's try that again. Now these tracks have ended so I probably don't have to worry about a train coming. There's nothing but grass over there and overgrown stuff over here. The only thing I'm worrying about right now is <laughs> mosquitoes. This sign on the ground here is pretty interesting. I just need to zoom in enough where I don't catch my own shadow. I feel like my highlights are going to be blown out too, so I'm going to underexpose by one stop. Up here is where they dump the grain. And... This might pose an interesting angle. Wow. That was an owl. Um, I know it's wide angle, so you probably did not see a very close shot of it, but um, yeah, that was a massive owl. I like the angle, but I don't like the lighting. You can see like the, the shadow cuts it off at a funny angle. I think a different time of day would have proved a better shot. I don't like that shadow line covering it. I would have rather had a cloudy day where everything was even. So I'm actually going to skip this shot. I'm also going to walk around instead of underneath so I don't get pooped on. There we go. Private property, no trespass sitting. Property under video surveillance. Okay. Well, if anybody's watching the video at this moment, they might come and tell me to get the hell out of here, so I better wrap up these four shots pretty quick. You think they would put the no trespassing sign on the opposite side? I like this crisscross pattern here, but I can't quite get a decent composition on it. Maybe what I'll do is I'll get an abstract of these bolts up here. Well, I got that. Oh, gross. Uh, I just killed a mosquito and it just gave me a big old. Oh. So he must have got me already. 
because he popped. <laughs> There's not enough hand sanitizer in the world that will shake that feeling. Anyway, I'm done for the day. I got my roll done. Uh, I actually expected to be able to shoot the entire roll from one grain elevator. That obviously did not work out whatsoever um, due to the limitations of the first one and even the second one. That train never came through. Nothing to do now but get home and get that roll developed. I am back home now. I'm in the dark room and I am ready to develop this roll. Okay, folks, moment of truth. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. I don't see any edge leaks. I don't see any spacing issues in between frames. This is fantastic. I'm just going to dip this into some photo flow, then hang it up to dry. No waiting for you, though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet. Well, I hope you enjoyed those photos. I have to admit that I'm starting to get pretty sick of capturing grain elevators. I know that it's uh, a worthy uh, cause because these things aren't going to be around forever. Uh, some of them have already been taken down. I once watched a mini documentary on a guy that reclaims the wood. I thought that was a fantastic endeavor. But yeah, it's time sensitive and you know, if I don't do it now, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. So far since I started the project, I've shot 15 grain elevators. Um, I've shot other ones before, but since the project started, 15. And that means that there's about 65 to go in Alberta. And man, I have to come up with something different in order to mix things up. I'm definitely sick of capturing these. Uh, midday with no clouds, no interesting lighting, and it is frustrating when I drive for an hour, two hours to get somewhere, and it's on private property. There's no real way to know. Like, you can do Google Street View, but it doesn't always go right up to the grain elevator because it's usually on a dirt road somewhere by the tracks. Um, it is time-consuming, and money consuming and I need to make sure that this is done in a way that doesn't break my bank or take up a whole bunch of time that I can't, you know, that I can't really justify. Again, I think it's an important project. I just need to be more creative about it.
Getting back to the camera though, let's talk about some pros and cons. First, the pros. I like the smaller size. I like that it's smaller than the F100. I don't always like going out and shooting with the beast. I do want to share lenses between both cameras, so this makes the most sense. Um, that brings me to another pro, which is the compatibility of the F80 is fantastic. I could put old vintage Nikon lenses on, or I can use my modern glass. There are also two features for the F80 that the F100 doesn't have. The first is a pop-up flash, not something that I'm going to use super often, but I definitely miss when it's not there. And the second is a screw hole for a trigger. And again, something that I don't necessarily use all the time, but I was disappointed to not see it on the F100. The only real con that I can come up with is the batteries it takes. It takes CR123 batteries, and the thing that I love about the F100 is that it takes double A's. It would have been perfect if this thing took AA batteries, but I realized then it would have made it bigger. I can't really think of anything else on the first go. I do have a bit of bad news though. While I was scanning my images, I noticed that the camera had scratched the film on several frames. Now, you know, this camera is in fantastic cosmetic condition. It functions properly. The meter seems to be working fine. Um, I mean, I did find things a little overexposed, though. That was probably me, though. It was a really bright, sunny day. No cloud in the sky to see. But, yeah, it's a little disappointing. Um, I remember trying to hunt down a little speck of whatever it was scratching my film on a previous camera that I owned a few years back, and it was just a super frustrating experience. And that's why I'm going to just go ahead and send this camera off to be CLA'd. Now, because I didn't pay anything for it, um, you know, it'll be a relatively inexpensive investment in comparison to if I did pay for it outright. While I am saying that I am disappointed, if I didn't think the camera was worth saving, then I wouldn't send it off to be CLA'd for potentially hundreds of dollars. This camera is going to be my secondary camera. Now, does that mean I'm not going to review Nikon cameras anymore? No, I'm obviously going to keep reviewing Nikon cameras. I'd love to be the guy that reviews Nikon film SLRs, especially with the recent announcement that Nikon will not be making SLRs anymore. That is my story with the Nikon F80. I absolutely love it. I'm just going to have to get it serviced just for peace of mind. And they might not just find that speck of dust in there. They might they might find a bunch of other stuff that I wasn't even aware of and that I saved myself a headache on in potential future rolls of film. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I certainly did. I'm very happy with my new camera, even though I'm going to have to do without it again for a little while. Um, if you want to support this channel, uh, I have a Patreon. I offer things like early access and free prints and your name in the credits. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic. Mm -hmm.